friends. Welcome to another story time with Sherry. I hope you're ready to hear another good book today. I have a friend that's joining us. If you haven't met her yet, this is my friend Polly. Polly, can you say hi to our friends? Hi. Polly's been joining us for a few weeks now, listening to our stories with you. If you have friends or brothers or sisters or even your dog or your cat, if they want to join you, make sure they gather around and they get ready to listen to a great book today. Are you ready today, Polly? Are you going to be a good listener? Polly's really always a good listener. I hope that you will like our story today. You ready, Polly? The book is called Granddad's Fishing Buddy. And the author is Mary Quigley. I tried not to fall asleep, staying overnight at Grandma's and Granddad's cottage on the lake. I had it all figured out, listening to owls, counting stars, playing shadow games way past my bedtime. I wasn't going to miss anything. Staying awake is how I knew when Granddad scuffed down the hallway while the sky was still blue-black and the stars shone like night lights. Why are you up in the night? I asked him. I could ask you the same thing, he said. I followed him to the kitchen and watched as he made breakfast and he put on his vest. Where are you going? I asked. Meeting my fishing buddy, he said. Ooh, fishing. Can I come too? Granddad started to shake his head. Then he stopped long enough to take a good look at me. I stood just as tall as I could so I wouldn't look a little bit older than I was. Can you keep real quiet so the fish don't know we're there? He asked. You bet, I said. Can you row the boat without making it turn in circles? With my eyes closed, I told him. He raised one eyebrow and I quickly added, but I promise to keep them open. Can you put a worm on a hook? I hesitated for a minute, not so sure about that one, but I took a deep breath and I said, no problem. Granddad seemed to add it all up in his head he put on his favorite fishing hat. Then he left a, gr a note for Grandmama. Gone fishing. See you for lunch. Love, Ed and Sarah. Yippee! I hooted, then remembered the part about being quiet. And I whispered, yippee! We pushed off the dock with a splash, sending ripples across the glassy lake. Steam lifted from the water, like clouds. Way out on the lake it was quiet except for the smooth sound of fishing lines sailing through the air and landing with a plop in the water. Watch close, Granddad said. That's how I learned. I had almost forgotten about Granddad's fishing buddy and it seemed he had too. I asked, why did we leave without your buddy? He'll meet us out here. Granddad said. We were the first boat out on the lake, but just as the ducks and the geese flew in one by one, boats began to roost on the rippled water. Granddad knew everyone. He smiled and waved. Sometimes they traded fishing secrets, sometimes a joke. He pointed to me and he said, this is my granddaughter, Sarah. She's a keeper. Was that your fishing buddy, I asked, after each person passed? Nope, he said time after time. Then we always got quiet again, so the fish would come. Granddad reached into a bucket of dirt and he pulled out a worm that coiled around as it swayed from his fingertips. In his other hand, he carefully held a hook. He looked at the hook, then the worm, then back again. I needed a plan. I remembered the licorice that Grandmama had filled my pockets with yesterday. I pulled out a little bit and I slid it onto the hook. I smiled nervously at Granddad, expecting him to stop me. He didn't. 
and I was glad. We waited a long time. Our fishing lines hung in the water like the tails of fallen kites. Suddenly, a shadow skimmed over the lake. A heron glided over our heads and landed near the lily ponds. He stood statue still, watching the water. In a blink, he plucked a fish right out. You see it in his mouth? Granddad smiled. He said, row. Which way, I asked. Over there, he said, pointing to where the heron balanced on one skinny leg. The heron eyed us both quickly, then gazed into the water. He waited, stirring up more fish. We cast our lines near the heron. My bobber went under. I held tight to my pole and wound the reel just like Granddad. I caught one, I hollered. It's a beauty, cheered Granddad. He was real proud, I could tell. But he wanted to catch one too. You'll get one, I told him. I put a piece of licorice on his hook. After a while, the heron flew away. I squeezed my eyes nearly shut, trying to follow his flight into the bright sky. He swooped and he landed near the opposite shore. Row, said Granddad. This time I knew exactly where. We followed the heron. Right then, I figured out who Granddad's fishing buddy was, the best fisherman on the lake. We caught lots of fish that day. Granddad, the heron, and I. While we tied the boat to the pier, I asked Granddad, when are you going out with your fishing buddy again? He winked, put his big fishing hat on my head, and he said, when are you coming back to the lake? Wasn't that a fun book? Do you know why they followed the heron? Herons like to hunt for fish too. So granddad knew if the heron was there hunting for his own fish, there would be more fish for granddad and Sarah to catch too. So they all got some. Did you like that book, Polly? I'm so glad that you got to join us today. I hope you get to come to the Science Center soon. Hopefully we'll be open so everybody can come back and enjoy all the things that we have here in person. Until next time, bye-bye. Say bye, Polly.